Hey guys, so I uh, wanted to jump in here and show you some of the cool stuff that uh, uh, my team has been working on in Microvelm uh, with spec groups. And so um, uh, not many people know this about Microvelm, but they support formula-driven materials, um, which is this cool concept that instead of having to um, come in and do something like a find and replace where you can come in here and say, uh, hey, this EXT, I could find and replace it and come in here and change anything that says EXT to PL1 or my laminate code um, to get my materials to be named what I want. Uh, now you can create these things called formula driven materials. And at the template level, there is a single material that in any given spec group or project can be defined differently, or it's defined the same, but the formula evaluates differently looking to, for example, in, in the case, the way we use it, um, a global variable or a project wizard variable that gives it a different value. So um, for in the case of this, you actually have a formula. And in the way we use it, we have that formula looking to a, a global variable that then we, we define the formula name in there. Um, all these other attributes can actually be formulated. So the thickness um, and even in your sheet sizes, you can formulate things like your panel sizes, your trims, um, and all of these things. Um, even your comments if you wanted, your X data, all these attributes at this point can be formulated. And then the way they make this possible is that you have a material alias name that stays static and in your spreadsheet in your workbook you actually can reference that so um, we've been using formula driven materials for six or eight years now and, and over that time um, have figured out a lot of ways to refine the process um, and so here i'm going to show you one of these examples we're working on for a current client um, and uh, so for starters, we set up to where everything is controlled through the wizards. So at the project wizard, basically you only actually have to change your, um, your, you only have to set up a wizard. So if I go into my project, actually, when I need to set up a new spec group, I only have to copy the wizard component. And we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff that, uh, is a little bit more advanced. Uh, I'll do some more entry level videos in the future. But for example, here I can copy the spec specification group. So I've got my new project I'm starting and I don't have to copy anything but the wizard. So let's say I'm setting up a, a PL1 spec group. All of these are gonna remain template level. So I'm not even gonna change my global, my cut parts or anything. Everything I need to do, I'm gonna put in here. So now that I have that, I can go into my wizard and I can set up what I need. So PL1, for instance, say I've got a Wilson art color. So I might say W4942-58, that's my code for my laminate and my liner. The backside of my one-sided panels, let's say in this case, it's, um, let's just say it's white. And then we're using melamine. So we have these default set up, but um, here this is a laminate veneer um, and metric 16 millimeter thick melamine interior. And so what this does is allows us to have a lot of defaults that are preset when I, you know, basically have one spec group that has all my defaults built into it. Um, and then whatever I want on my elevation, I'm going to say I want it to say PL1. So this is what's actually going to show when I draw my 2D elevation on my products. But this is what's going to end up on my material name. So if I just go here to this view materials tab um, and I can go to cabinet doors, you see it actually updates the name that's what the name of my material is actually going to be and it put that code in there so see it says w4942-58 uh, and that is exactly what i put here so if i go back here um, i can look at my sides and show open cabinet parts um, let's see here cabinet bottoms um, so you can see here it's a one-sided material so it's saying my face material is the w4942 and my bottom face is white. If I were to go back here and change the interior, and if I needed to edit it, I could actually just pick, instead of having to go and reassign my pointers, I can just pick from my predefined formula materials what the base cabinet should use for the base bottom. So here's my base bottom. Say I wanted to change my backs. 
Um, I could pick a different material here and say I wanted to make masonite backs. Um, I could do that here. So you have all the other same stuff. I can set my grains so I can set the grain direction of the material, which is my sheet grain direction. And separately, I can pick the grain direction of my parts, my door and drawer front, my drawer boxes. Uh, you can still pick things like your default cabinet sizes, um, and construction stuff, all these, you know, usually your default to what your normal settings are. Um, in this case, we wanted for this client to be able to toggle back and forth between dado construction or dowel, which you, we, they can do here. Um, and then you can pick your hardware. So I can select my poles. And here we've actually set up a custom pole. So say if you don't have um, the pole in your, heart, in your library, we make it to where you can actually set up and call your pole, whatever it is. You can put in your model number here. You can put in the name you want to call it. So it might be like, uh, hey, full of bar pole, an item number, whatever that is. Um, and then you can put in your actual machining center to sub center. Uh, and this we have set up to where it'll draw these typical types. So if it's a wire or a square wire or a handle, so in this case, it would be a handle for the bar pole. Um, and um, you can set it all up here without having to add a hardware to your library. So uh, we try to make it easy, especially for lowering the barrier of entry for newer drafters or engineers learning microvellum, learning your standards. Uh, we build as much into the library as possible so that uh, all they have to do when they set up is come in here, set up the spec groups, and everything behind the scenes just works. Uh, similarly, if you do get to a point where, like I mentioned before, you only have a single project wizard, um, but for instance, maybe you are a company who likes to mic your material thicknesses and you need to go in and set your melamine thickness, but you might have five spec groups and you only want to set your melamine one time across the whole job. Uh, we build that to where since you have a single uh, cut parts file, you can come into the cut parts wizard and set the thicknesses here. So for material one, uh, we want to set the thickness. I want to change this from 16 to 15.7. Um, and then I need to set this guy to 15.8. Um, that all can be done here and, um, and set. And then what we did is we set it up here to tell you, okay, white melamine, these are all the pointers that are using white melamine. So let me go back here. See, that's the 15.7. And what it's telling me here is this. Uh, 16 millimeter material, um, which is uh, the interior color, and then it's a melamine. So this is a melamine material is being used um, on all these pointers. So if I uncheck that, it's going to take that thickness variable away and go back to the default. Um, but for instance, because this is the same, so if I click OK, and then I say, hey, I'm going to copy spec group, I'm going to make a PL2. And I'm only going to copy the wizard. So now I can go into PL2 and go into my project wizard. And again, I can say this is going to be PL2. I can put a whole different thing here. So maybe this is a Formica 56, 78. Um, but in here, now I can go into my cut parts wizard and see that's 15.7 is still there. So I can say this, I can just set this thickness across the whole job because I have a single universal cut parts file for all my spec groups. And then I can set my material thicknesses for, for example, my doors here, only at the wizard. So it's unique per spec group for those materials that are different per spec group. Um, anyways, I wanted to just show a little bit of what is possible, some of the things that we're helping our customers work um, into their libraries at Microbellum. Um, 